Hey everyone, Wayne Bogan. So I've run into a problem, decided I'm gonna try and fix it myself. So I wanted to show you what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, and I'm not a professional, but we'll see what the end results are. So the challenge is I'm in my crawl space uh, and I've had the Terminex guy who's been telling me for a little while now that I've got too much moisture in the crawl space. And so I knew that there was a particular area that I had that had too much moisture. Um, I figured it was coming from the crawl space entry door and that the water was getting in, getting down to the area, and I'll show you this in a minute, uh, and getting in, and then it was going away. I had gone under the crawl space, walked around, crawled around, and really didn't see much of a problem anywhere else across the crawl space. So figured I'd just let it go. Well, recently I had a problem in my air conditioner unit in the attic. Uh, the drainage pipe coming out of that unit for the condensation came into the crawl space and then went out underneath my deck to get outside. That ended up getting clogged. And so when I came under to show the AC guy where the pipe was and where the joints came in, uh, I was walking around, had the flashlight and noticed that there was water sitting on top of the vapor barrier and the water was in the middle of the house, not next to the edge in the area that I knew had always gotten some water, but it was just droplets of water over in that one area and I wasn't quite sure did it drop from the uh, condensation off the AC uh, ductwork that's underneath or was it from something else. So the short version is I started checking around. I got a quote from the Terminex guy. Uh, I ended up getting a quote from a second company and had a third company coming in and started doing some of my own research. And what I had looked at and got surprised about was what was the best way to solve the problem. So this is my journey and I'll give you little snippets here and there of videos of what I've done, how I'm doing it. So the short version, as I went back in, I knew that I needed to drop the humidity. So I didn't have any tools to measure the humidity under the house. I uh, wasn't able to tell for sure um, what was going on or what needed to be tested. But as I come back in and start getting quotes from the vendors, I realized it was probably time to, to take a look at, do I have them do it or do I do it myself? So, so let me summarize from, I won't name the vendors, but vendor A, came in and said, well, we can fix your problem. We'll put in, as a minimum, uh, a new vapor barrier. And that was gonna run around $1,400. But we'd also recommend an area where the water seems to puddle up at times, probably coming in through the crawl space door, that you probably wanna put in the sump pump. So the combined vapor barrier plus the sump pump install was gonna be around $6,000. Now, no details. It was just a basic listing of vapor barrier, sump pump, and didn't really tell me much else of what it was going to produce or what was going to be inside the crawl space here. So I had a second very vendor come in, I call him Vendor B, and they came in from uh, Charlotte. So very nice guy, sat down, went into the house, spent about an hour, hour and a half going through looking at everything. And as he did that, um, turned around and realized that he, one, knew what he was doing. Two, he already had a predefined solution in place. So he came in, he talked to me, showed me some pictures of where he had seen a little bit of mold in different locations, had taken measurements of the moisture in the wood, the humidity under the house, they were all too high. There is one area that there is some uh, mold that I'm gonna have to get rid of, and it's from a leak that I had had, a water leak, under my refrigerator several years ago, and mold has gotten uh, and grown in that particular area, and so I'll need to take that out. So. Looked at that, interesting for this particular company, even though the guy was very nice, very prompt, very professional, uh, he came with four pre-written quotes already printed out and ready to go for me. So number one, that tells me he probably looked at Google, saw the size of my house, did an estimate, and also had a package that he was gonna use for doing uh, the solution to solve the problem. Now, his solution was full encapsulation. So that is closing the vents, sealing off all the air from coming under the house and then coming back and putting in a sump pump and a dehumidifier. And the quotes, depending on what he was gonna do, of the four quotes range from right around $10,000 up to 15,000. Now I had a third vendor, lots of ads on TV, lots of ads on YouTube, uh, very good websites, lots of explanations of what they do and how they do it. Uh, and you could tell that their primary focus is encapsulation as well. Uh, and looked at theirs, and I had seen people talk about the quotes, it was gonna be $20,000. Uh, 
So I already had quote number one from the first vendor, quote number two from the second vendor. And then the third vendor was getting ready to come in and kind of find out one of my neighbors had had this vendor come, vendor C. Uh, they had already visited his house and given him a quote that was over $20,000 with an option to go up to $30,000. And I figured there's gotta be a better way. So then I sat down and talked to some friends. Uh, I've got a, a good friend named Duck uh, who wor has worked in the heat and air industry for years. Uh, some other folks that have worked on building houses. And then I ended up finding a bunch of people on YouTube. The number one source I ended up going back to on a regular basis is Crawl Space Ninja. So if you look at his YouTube channel and look at his webpage, I think it's crawlspaceninja.com. Uh, lots of good information where he shows you what he does in the Tennessee area. It's kind of spreading into Georgia and some of the other CC franchises, uh, but really just explained what they did and why they did it. And one of the things that he had said, and I saw from two or three other people was, you know, the first thing you need to do is just start drying out your space. Don't worry about putting in the sump pump. Don't worry about upgrading the, the vapor barrier or going down the full path of encapsulation. Just get in something that's gonna start drying it out. Well, my first thought about drying it out was, well, let me put van, uh, excuse me, fans in the vents that would blow the air through and underneath the house and then back out. And the more I researched that, uh, ended up realizing that that wasn't a good idea. I'll create a separate video talking about the advantages of closed versus open vent fans. Uh, and even talking to my dad, he's like, you don't need to close your vents. It's gonna cause more problems. He had done something once before and it turned around and caused all kinds of problems. So I decided I was gonna test bit by bit what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So I've actually started recording the measurements uh, and so I'm breaking the, the house area into the crawl space into two zones. Zone one, near the crawl space when you first enter. That's also the area that had the standing water at times. Uh, zone two, which has less area, I mean, is closer to the ground. It is close to my deck, which I don't think has a lot of airflow coming from underneath the deck. Uh, and that area is also under my kitchen. So when I went back in and did the initial measurements, uh, and I just bought a, a tool with uh, off of Amazon that lets me measure what I'm doing and what's the humidity. Uh, that tool came in uh, and gave me the humidity measurement, the relative humidity, and I did it in zone one and zone two. So zone one near the cross space door uh, and near the area that had all the water actually had the lower humidity. Even though there was not as much standing water, I think most of it had dried up, but the water next to the wall, you can push with your finger and it's mud. So I thought that would be the most humid area, but it's not. The relative humidity in zone one was 74%. Well, everything that you read said you should keep the humidity under your house under 60%. Then I went to zone two, took the measurement there, and to my surprise, even though that area seemed to be drier and that area seemed to have less of a problem, the humidity after measuring it several times was 80%. So I then started turning around and looking to see, well, what can I do? and where should I need to go next? So uh, I went back in and bought another measuring tool that measures moisture in the wood. Uh, and so I came in and measured under the house in zone one. And so the, the moisture in the wood in zone one, in the area with the standing water, was about 15% in the wood. Well, you really want it in the 12 to 14% range, maybe up to 15%, so not bad. It was actually better than I expected for an area where I know water regularly uh, aggregates. So I went to zone two and that was a surprise. So I went and checked multiple of the beams and the moisture level in the beams was running around 19 and to 20 and percent. So I just set it as an average of 20%. So the area that seemed to be drier, that was a little bit closer to the ground and not to where I could almost stand up in it, similar to area in zone one that I'm in now. I can't quite totally stand up, I'm six foot, but I can get up a little bit, uh, had higher moisture and humidity and higher moisture in the wood. So here's my steps and I'll go through and show other pieces. So number one, I decided I was gonna look at closing the vents and seeing what that would take. So I will do a separate video, as I said, on the advantages of open versus closed and I'll show you a study that I found. It's the only study that I found, but it comes in and shows that the humidity outside matches the humidity in the crawl space. And so I wanted to test that and on two different days, I went outside and measured the humidity outside, then the humidity in zone one, and in both instances, the humidity was almost exactly the same. 
If it was 74% outside, it was 74% inside. Uh, and so there was a day when it got up to 85% as the same. Another day when it got down to 56% humidity outside, it was the same. So obviously with the vents open, the humidity under the house was gonna match the humidity outside. So my first step and idea was I was gonna close the vents, but I knew if I did that, I was gonna to have to turn around and find some way to dry out the air. So what I did is looked at a bunch of the different sites and had seen both the Cross Space Ninja and a couple of the others recommend an April air dehumidifier. So measure the distance under my house. It's around 2000 square feet, roughly, uh, maybe 2200, I didn't measure it exactly and found that they have an April Air 1820 that would cover 2,800 square feet. They also had an April Air 1830 that covered 38 to 4,000 square feet. Did some searching and actually found that I could get either one of those units on Amazon, and the 1830 was only about $90 more than the 1820. So I bought the April Air 1830 on Amazon. It was around $1,100. Uh, to go with it, I needed to buy a condensate pump. So I got a, a model that I knew would work. Uh, I'll put that model detail at the bottom of the video. And so I connected up the dehumidifier, connected up the condensate pump, and have a temporary solution running right now because I wanted just to see would I get in results. Would I see a decrease in humidity and would I see a decrease in the moisture levels? So I'll get to that in a separate video where I'll show you that install. But my journey is going to be coming in closing the vents, um, and I'm just using the vents uh, the way they were meant to be closed. This was one that was put into the house where there's a little lever on the outside. You lift and pull out, it closes a little plastic door on the vents. It really only closes them probably 90%. There's still little holes that you can see. You can definitely see sunlight it, during the day when you look at the vents. And so um, I closed all of those uh, on the day that I put in the dehumidifier. Uh, and then I put the condensate pump in. And so I've taken the condensate pump uh, and I've run it through a center hole in the vent right next to where that little lever is to close the little doors on the vents. And I have it running outside and draining on the ground right next to where I have the French drain on the outside of the house. So pay attention to the upcoming videos where I will talk about opening and closing the vents. I'll show you what I did with the installation of the April Air and the condensate pump. It's in a temporary location now because I wasn't sure if that was going to be the final location. And then I'll come in as I do additional steps where I think I'm going to go in and actually seal the vents. I'll show you what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So the intent of this is to do two things. Number one, to help me measure and show the progress of what I'm getting out of the solution I'm putting in place because if it doesn't work, I'll take it out and hire the professionals. Uh, two, it lets me measure it and see what's happening and by sharing it with you, I can turn around and determine if it even works. And so you get to learn from my mistakes as I go through, uh, and I've got some, and I'll talk about those as I go through, uh, but you get to see what I'm doing bit by bit, and so I'll post these so that you can follow the journey if you're interested and if it's worthwhile for you. All right, hope this is helpful. Have a good night.